there was this one lady who uh, messaged me that after she read the book it made it easier for her to accept her son her son is gay and she bought the book because of that reason there was a point when i would seek love i think i've kind of stopped that and i would rather that okay if it just comes by it's okay i just want whatever love i get to be honest and that's what always hurts me that that if if that becomes a question mark that little love that i felt if that becomes a question mark i need to believe that everything was not true you know then i feel like a fool because i really felt happy how can all that happiness be you know and so i seek honesty and the first thing i want to show you is this uh i have read it and i just want to uh, tell you that uh, it just reminded me of something that one of your fans had said about you once that you are a visual artist and your book has the same kind of tactile quality because it took me to your childhood uh, home it made me walk in your skin it also connected me to the sense of isolation that you have felt as a man as a filmmaker and it also made me rejoice in the fact that from a lone dreamer you are now somebody who's found a soul tribe that dreams with you and for you and i felt a sense of pride and ownership and connection with this story and i just want to know what kind of feedback has been uh, there for the book and if there is something that you remember which really moved you uh, somebody said something or wrote something to you uh i think a lot of it has been uh, especially from women has been like really really kind and uh, uh you know saying that it's one it's a very easy read because it does not feel like reading a biography biography but like you know a story which was nice to hear and um, uh there was this one lady who uh messaged me that after she read the book it made it easier for her to accept her son her son is gay and she bought the book because of that reason you know and she said that it really helped her understand her son better and that and that uh, you know meant a lot to me uh, i see a lot of people from smaller towns Uh, uh messaging me in inbox that they're reading the book you know because they're not very a lot of them are not uh, you know confident to put it out there that i'm reading the book but uh, you know and that was specifically the reason why i wanted to call it i'm on it and i'm gay that you know there is so much of shame attached to being gay that it was important to just put it out there so that it starts empowering people that it's okay we can be out there that you know when you walk into an airport i have had people you know sending me you know video shots that you know i just saw this at the airport and it makes me feel so much better about myself you know mm. so there mm-hmm. was a lot of that and then there were people who are you know were like okay uh, i'm waiting for the kindle version i don't or people who don't have the kindle like i want to read it but i can't order the book and get it home so which is sad but uh, but uh, i'm not surprised you know that you know there is all this various kind of you know uh, there was one male uh, reviewer who liked the book and all that but he was the he was the only one who told me that oh you come across as promiscuous don't you think so so, so i'm like you know just because my sex life is not as boring as as yours you don't have to categorize me in that uh, space so otherwise yeah i think overall it's been really really you know uh, i didn't expect 
I mean, there's been a lot of write-up also about the book. I didn't expect so much. And I've been going to uh, small uh, book readings and not book readings, discussions, you know. And it's been really nice, the kind of uh, questions people have, the way, the love they give. You know, it's not something I'm used to in a sense that, you know, when you are doing film uh, previews and all, it's very different. And this is much more intimate, smaller groups, and uh, I'm enjoying that experience. Right. Uh, you've not held back, uh, as you yourself said, you've not held back much about the seminal incidents in your personal and your professional life. Did any, uh, during the process of writing, uh, was there any point where you kind of second-guessed yourself, should I put it, should I not put it? What is going to be the, the reaction of, uh, you know? Actually, when I started writing, I decided that I would like to be as honest as possible, to have my weakness, my strength, things I faltered in and everything there, because I thought if I'm talking about myself, then I, ha I would rather have people love or hate me, but the real person and not a camouflaged me whichever way it was and uh, so apart from uh, maybe uh, disguising names of uh, people uh, because especially people have been uh, in relationships with you know uh, that was something I did because uh, you know uh, whether however it might have ended but I would respect their privacy and if I love them I should not uh, you know that 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 is something that uh, i should not uh, misuse that uh, you know this space to yeah. do something that's terrible and you so I that was the only thing not naming people was the only thing i think you're much harder on yourself than you are on other people i think you're far more demanding you know of exactitude in in you know, certain ways of life and in art as well. And you do too hard on yourself, I feel. But um, uh, you wrote this book with your sister, Irene Dhanmalik, yeah. and she has been like uh, one of the strongest uh, influences uh, in your life. Uh, what was the process of co-writing this book with her and were there any like fierce disagreements along the way? Uh, no, actually, only right in the beginning, I told her, don't be scandalized and don't judge me. <laughs> That's the only thing I told her. And she didn't. And uh, only uh, there were things that, you know, of, especially with childhood, that I had forgotten some details or mixed up the dates and all that. And she would work on those things. Uh, or if she thought that there were things which might be boring for a third person, you know, uh, to reduce those bits, to edit out those bits, uh, that uh, at one point she asked me where I was writing about how when I first came to Bombay that, you know, I did not really tell her at that time about what was happening with my life because she was too busy with her. And she says, I really never asked you, you know, is, is, you were really lonely. And I was like, yeah you didn't really at that time you were too you know so that was it and uh, for me it was also nice that uh, when i when my brother read it and he said that it brought back so much so many memories of our childhood and how difficult it was for each of us to be doing what we are and he says and dada turned out to be the most artistic so i was like okay that was nice of it hmm. Uh, there's there is a lot in the book which there's there's the the canvas is so large. I mean, in terms of the kind of uh, experiences that you have shared, and apart from the isolation that I'll talk about more because it really resonated with me. Like you said, it did with so many women. Uh, the, there is also this whole narrative around the sense of home and displacement, and how it kind of continues through life. And do do you find it still hard to uh, get a sense of home in spaces or you are you home anywhere you go now? I mean, 
has anything shifted? I feel that it's more now the way I define home is more the people around me who make me. So it's it stopped becoming the place. It's more the people around me. So because I realize, uh, though you know there is something that a bond that I share with Bhutan will always remain. That special that is difficult. It's like your first film you know, will always remain special. So maybe the land of your, where you're born and where you, your childhood, you can never, it's in your blood, you yeah. know. Uh, it's like, you know, it's everything else is acquired through one's journey, but that was there. That was gifted to me when I was born, you know. Uh, yeah. And that, I think that, you know, even if I'm not there for years and years and years, the... Uh, the minute I'm there, I can feel the earth speak to me, and and even just thinking about it, it that is the space that makes me most emotional. But I know that it, you know it does. You know, none of these spaces, be it uh, Bombay, where I've been, you know, shifting flats <laughs> over the years, so they don't really become what would uh, what I perceive. The word home to me you know but for me now when I'm in the surround of uh, surrounded by certain people with whom I feel safe loved warm and then that space feels like home. home. Um, I'll come back to that uh, sense of isolation which I also found to be very relatable at so many different levels and you spoke, you've written also very sensitively about the ex female experience in the industry and in society. And you, you uh, identify with that vulnerability and sense of, you know, being pushed to the margins of larger conversations uh, in society. I also, I connected very deeply with that. Um, but you're somebody, you're also somebody who is not okay with just being at the margins. You are in the trenches. You are telling stories about characters who have never been seen or heard before. And um, not that it has made things easier for you. Uh, even today, when it comes to pushing narrative boundaries for, uh, you know, queer characters or LGBTQ characters, there's still a pushback. There is still something that uh, is not, you know, easy, uh, uh, so to speak. And here I want to talk to you about the experience you've had with your latest film, VR. Is there something, any movement on that front or is it still? Uh, yes and no, because for me, you know, what came out of that experience was one, at the end, you know, when this whole thing ha happened, I had actually received a lot of messages from people in the army, people I know, who told me that, you know, uh, you know that we love you and respect you and uh, don't feel disheartened and don't let this, uh, you know, uh, decision by the ministry uh, color your judgment about us. We love you. A lot of, lot of people from like really high ranks and, you know, different positions of army wrote that to me, which felt very you know, uh, heartening. And also a lot of people I don't know, you know, from different regiments would message me that, thank you for fighting our battle. It is suffocating, you know, uh, like really remote places, people would message, you know, uh, people who have quit the army and now, uh, living in queer relationships reached out you know and that was uh, really you know so i in a way for me when i was refused permission you know noc it kind of started a dialogue a dialogue mm -hmm. that was it was all over the press it went up to the parliament but i think that itself in a way is success that it was discussed in the parliament and they didn't have the guts to ever discuss it with me. You know, I was just sent an email, 
without giving and then they came up with ridiculous things like oh it's you know uh, in uh, what you call uh, uh, humiliating the image of the army and it's, it's bad for the security of the country and then i wrote to the crpf you know asking them that what is their stand on uh, discrimination of lgbt people in the crpf and the supreme court verdict and then they finally wrote to me that they respect and follow the supreme court verdict on 377 you know uh, and i that's when i found out that the police the crpf uh, and couple of other such forces uh follow like you know like that's why a badai do could be made the supreme court verdict but the army has its own you know uh thing which they have with they still want to stick to a colonial thing when uk does not follow it anymore we know mm-hmm. we always lag behind you know we i don't know why we nurture the worst things mm-hmm. and uh and so i've been like you know toying with the idea and then i decided then i've decided that i'll work around it you know there is not much that i have to change in the script except for maybe the costume and the message will still be the same go through yeah, yeah. because there's been so much of talk and honestly i don't need to change anything in the script apart from the yes yeah, so i'm planning to start the film sometime maybe mid october you know independently just like i did pine code which i just finished because i'm like really exhausted trying to convince platforms or you know the big studios and i feel that my way i have accepted now will be always independent finding like minded people who will come together and support and do it mm. Sanjay Suri has been uh, a source of great support creatively and uh, personally as well for you. Um, but the, your journey as an independent filmmaker, as you said, has never been easy. I mean, there has always been different sets of challenges with each film. And uh, now, if I want to see you, uh, you know, creating the kind of films that you want, but you can't because maybe a culture of filmmaking has been replaced by this corporate very steely kind of an attitude which you've written about also in in your book you know these boardroom conversations by people who don't really understand cinema but who have the authority to you know yeah you know like recently i was sitting uh with one ott platform and they're like you know where we are working in detail for the last 8 months for the story suddenly because there's a new corporate head comes and says on it i want to know what is your vision of this film and i'm like you know all those 100 pages that's already written doesn't that give you you know and secondly you know and, and they're like oh but you know you are busy doing other things and i'm like yeah the, the whole difference is when i'm making my films nobody asks me what's your vision <laughs> what are you trying to do mm-hmm. they trust me and my vision and they're with me in my journey you know and they're not sitting there about acha audience will think this or this that you know i said uh, i i don't you know and i don't enjoy as a filmmaker having to navigate uh, you know then you feel like almost like a, you know which i keep mentioning that you are making a product to order you know someone has told you okay you are the best cook and you make this pulao for me but i want it like this like this like this like this hmm uh, so all this no all these notions that ott has expanded creative boundaries and it's pushing uh, fresh talent in the front do you think those are not really correct notions see it all happens for a while just like you know when the multiplexes came in it was like yes space for independent cinema disappeared quickly ott started with empowering a lot of new talent and now those new talents have become ott stars and everyone is running after them and now if you go with another set of new people very few people want to go mm-hmm. and now suddenly you'll see actors who have stopped doing mainstream films are 
taking over the ott space so they're also this constant let's have some name whatever it's not about talent you know and that's why you will see that very often again compared to the number of uh series films that's coming out very few are genuinely good you know they it's just churning it's becoming like what television became you know there is, of course it's a better version right now but there is also a lot of ott which believes that ott is more or less television but you can just put in lot more abuses and sex you mm. know and uh, so you know i feel that we only look at one side and we think that ott is only about some good series in amazon and netflix and hotstar and sony maybe but there is so much very problematic stuff happening because it's populist yeah. and uh, also there is uh, i mean many much many more talent that can be given space that we don't give space you know the same set of people you will suddenly see them everywhere yeah. you know every second series will have the same sort of true. different combinations of the same sort of people. true true uh and the same kind of themes as well i mean the thematic diversity is also shrinking a little yeah. bit it's not yeah. what kind of changes since you've been in the industry for a while what kind of structural changes you would you like i just wish that we were much more democratic uh uh in a way that you know no no, no industry nothing is perfect we are all human beings but when you look at hollywood at any given point you know any age group you will have 20 options of actors male and female we don't have that here you know right now i'm trying to cast for vr and i'm you know like really firstly like queer character you know good actor queer character intimate scenes it is like impossible almost you know so um i feel that as an industry we would open up to outsiders more and we would not get so gatewised by you know like all these ott platforms will have deals of hundreds of crores with production houses who start having their own cartel of talent which they have total control over so it becomes more and more difficult for people coming from outside unless you decide to belong to those cartels to do things you know uh honestly independently you know which is not uh, trying to fall into those spaces right i feel that earlier you know be it when when it was the time for parallel cinema or even about 15 years back or 10 years back you know i think there was so much more exciting independent cinema happening you know mm-hmm. and there was a lot of value given to the films that was going to film festivals and then, you know like today this uh student of mine has made this beautiful manipuri film and he's trying to get a platform but no one and if i'm telling them that look it's been selected for busan or this or that no interest oh we are looking at south films why because now south is the trend mm-hmm. you know so we don't you know especially if it is regional language other like very difficult for films even if you uh, if your film has traveled to festivals and it's not easy to get a good uh uh deal you know for uh, ott space here right i also feel that cinema at any given point of time is a reflection of the times that we live in do you feel that the cinema which is coming out which is becoming popular is reflective of the realities that we're living in in a way yes well, one is of course in especially with malayalam cinema uh because the censor board there is different and uh, the pol- politics is different it is much more provocative and much more it questions the system much more and can get through the same film if it was made in hindi would never go- come out it would have and because the harassment from makers platforms have faced over the last few years a lot there is a lot of restraint mm-hmm. people are constantly you know like people constantly tell me don't forget where you are you know be careful you know uh, be careful of what you tweet be careful of what you write be careful of what you talk you know so i think that that 
feeling is much more there in the Hindi film industry than a lot of uh, you know South. It's it has got its own uh, voice that way, you know, uh, and that's why also a lot more interesting works. Then also there is a certain uh, kind of especially in, again Tamil South also can't be put in one bracket. Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada, they're all very different, you know. For example, there's a certain kind of discipline in the Malayalam film industry, okay. And this whole notion where, you know, I think here we are responsible for having overpaid actors, spoil them so that they don't come on time, they don't respect the work uh, ethics and uh, be the OTT platforms, they all have overpaid and that's why the industry is bleeding right now. You know, we are doing films with a certain kind of budget where the budget is not necessarily spent in production, but they're spent in like stars who charge, I don't know, the earth, and then they will charge also a huge amount of money for their star, which may be the the you know the hod's none of them might be getting how much a driver of a star might be getting you know so it's kind of really really sad the kind of demands after charging in crores they can't even pay their own star you know and to have this entourage of like you know it's almost like pride that each one will say that oh i have to get five of my staff someone needs more you know so it's like a and the industry has supported this terrible practice. And that's why today we are also bleeding because films have unrealistic budget. And that has started happening with a lot of these new stars who have come into the... And I was just telling someone that when I was making I Am, it would have been much more easier to get well-known actors to act just because they love the script and not for the money because I had hardly anything to offer. Then today, today the first thing most of these young uh, actors would ask is, who is the producer? Where is it getting released? How much, is, what are the, what's the budget? Where actually the first concern should be the script mm. and the role. And I don't see that which is very sad for an industry. For you, filmmaking is a very immersive uh, process from what I have uh, read in your book. Like you give everything to it when you're making a film as a writer, as an editor, as you know, somebody who's, who lives and breathes the characters. Um, but there have been so many disappointments and heartbreaks in the way the cin cinema with, made with so much passion you know, is treated at times. How do you go on? I mean, this is something that I would like to know as a creative person. I don't know. I feel that uh, for me, uh, one is unfortunately money has never been the driving force. So that does not break me. And I always find ways to keep going. You know, because I think the need to create is much more than the hurdles that I face. Uh, and the happiness, you know, like recently when I was doing pine cone, the first day of shoot, and this is for the first time, though it's my seventh film, that I was working with a crew of 15 people, which included the driver, you know. So really small unit of people who have all worked with me before, all charged. And I told them that, you know, I don't care how small the budget is, how difficult, that we're all multitasking, you know. But the happiness I feel, you know, and I, the happiness I could see in my team, that's what matters, you know, mm. just to be there and to complete it and be it, you know. And that's been, I think, uh, that's what kind of drives me. And also, for me, what matters most is when I complete a film, when I look at it, if I can respect what I've done. Right. And if I can do that, then I can push myself to keep doing it. Right, right. Um, love is a huge part of the narrative in the book uh, that you've written. You know, love's arrival, its departure, uh, its loss, its gifts, its scars. 
is there anything that in retrospect you know about human relationships that you didn't know when you started writing <clears throat> I think while writing this book, I went through a process of, in a way, forgiving. You know, uh, in a way, realizing that uh, the beautiful memories were so beautiful that I think I should let go of the bitterness. I think that was a really big, big thing that happened while writing, and. Uh, the sadness doesn't go, that, but the bitterness, I think, has, uh, to a large extent, gone. And, um, and I feel that I would be much more uh, uh, at peace if I would meet someone now, you know, if one of my lovers now, uh, to be able to deal with it and not get destroyed. Hmm. You know, and uh, and maybe it's also after writing the book is a point when I've kind of stopped. Uh, there was a point when I would seek love. I think I've kind of stopped that, and I would rather that okay, if it just comes by, it's okay. Hmm. I mean, it's not that I've closed my doors and windows, but I'm not really seeking anymore. What kind of relationship would you like to be in? Uh, something that is, um, you know, that's honest. That's the most, one of the things that's very, very important is, however, for me, it's not, I don't care if someone has loved someone. Whatever. I just want whatever love I get to be honest. And that's what always hurts me that, that if if that becomes a question mark, that little l love that I felt, if that becomes a question mark, if I need to believe that everything was not okay. true, you know, then I feel like a fool because I really felt happy. How can all that happiness be? You know, and so I seek honesty. You know, I seek honesty, and I seek a uh, space at the same time. For both, I mean, where each one gives the other space, and uh, I mean, where both are independent at the same time, there for each other, you know, uh, just small things, you know, not much actually, just companionship, you know, just waking up together and traveling together, and at the same time, respecting that, you know. Hopefully, both of us working, so you know that each understands that because my passion for my work is so so important that uh, if someone does not accept the amount of time I devote to my work, it would you know it wouldn't be something that would be easy to deal with. Right. What really struck me about this book and what. I love about it is that despite the darkness and the challenges, the isolation, the heartbreak, you've always held on to a thread of light. And you've always found your way back into, you know, beautiful spaces and creative and personal. You've built enduring relationships with people you have worked with and people you have met in this journey. And you've never let anything or anyone stop you from making the kind of films that you want to make if you really look back uh, at your journey. And I hope that you will continue to make what you want to make, regardless of the odds. And I wish you nothing but great fulfillment in your personal and your artistic life. And I want to thank you for this interview and for this book. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Oni. Bye. Thank you. Hi, this is Reema and if you liked what you just saw, then um, do like and subscribe because remember this is a safe space for people to talk, share their stories, to hear each other, make some time in their busy lives for unboxed conversations.